Welcome back to this family of faith. We are super excited that you are here with us. Look, we have done what God has told us to do to take the message of this gospel beyond the four walls of the church into what? Into all of the world to make disciples of all nations. But we're starting right here in the city of Dallas, Texas, right here where we reside. We believe that the Holy Spirit abides and we're super excited to be coming to you live from Cafe Muse at the Black Academy of Arts and Letters. Look, I'm excited. I'm about to get out of the way. The music ministry is going to usher us into the spirit of God. My pastor is here. He's here with the, the one and only Albany Jewel Haynes. They're getting ready to open up the bread of life, the word of God, to teach for us and for our edification tonight. We're super excited that there are, 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 there are members of our community who are here present with us tonight. Clap it up so they can hear you online, so they can know that you're here. Yes, yeah, so they can know that you're here. Well, we're super excited if you're watching us online. You still got time to get here down on Canton Street, the Black Academy of Arts and Letters. Make your way on down. We're going to be here uh, for a little bit of time, again, getting into the word of God. I want to just get out of the way. I, again, hit that like button, hit share, spread this message everywhere. Get involved in the comment section. Let us know what you're thinking, how you're feeling about the word of God as it goes forth tonight. I want to go ahead and get out of the way, usher in the spirit of God, let this awesome praise team do their thing, and again, allow God to have his way. Let's look to the Lord on this awesome night. Gracious God, our Father, you are amazing. You're better than good, and for that, we give you thanks and praise. Lord, we could be anywhere in the world, but you allowed us to make it to this place at this moment safely. Lord, you protected us all day long from hurt, from harm, from danger, seen and unseen. Lord, you encamped warring angels around us to protect us in our going out and in our coming in. Lord, as we come tonight on this Bible study, as we come tonight for this tribe cast live, Lord, our endeavor is not to, to be seen. Our endeavor, oh God, is, is not to have our name to be made manifest. Our one desire, our heart's desire is to please you, is to serve you, is to worship you in the beauty of holiness. Right now, oh God, in the name of Jesus, I ask that your Holy Spirit would rest upon this gathering, oh God. If there's someone who is here, who is under the spirit of oppression, under the spirit of depression, believing that things cannot happen for them, and is under a spirit of faithlessness, Lord, under a spirit of, of, of doubt, oh God, for, for someone who is dealing with an experience of infirmity in their physical body, someone who is dealing in their mental health, Lord, for someone who is spiritually unwell, we ask right now that your Holy Spirit would usher in a spirit of healing, to come into this place. Lord, we say, have your way. We say, welcome into this place that we are, we are usable vessels for your glory. We ask that you would get all of the glory. None of it needs to go to us. May it all go to you. We ask right now that you would anoint your word, that you would anoint those who will stand in the gap and deliver the word, Lord, anoint them afresh. And anew. we pray for fresh oil for those who are going to usher us into the spirit of God. Lord, anoint the musicians. Lord, we ask that you would anoint those ministers who are going to use their voices to bring praise and honor and glory to your name. Lord, we pray for the, an outbreaking, an outpouring of the Holy Spirit like on the day of Pentecost. And we believe, oh God, that you will get the increase, that you will be pleased, that you will bring glory, that you will get the glory, and that it will be brought only to your name. Meet every need, supply it according to your riches and glory, as we know that only you can do. And we will be mindful to give you the praise and the glory and the honor in this unconventional space. We're going to give you an unconventional praise. In an, in a, in an unusual place, we're going to give you an, uh, uh, an undignified worship because you are worthy to be praised. This is our prayer in the name of Jesus, through the Holy Spirit, according to your word, we count it done. And we say amen. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that's within me. Bless his name. Come on, somebody, bless the Lord wherever you are. What a mighty God we serve. Come on, what a mighty God we serve. Let everything that has breath praise you, the Lord. 
Are you excited about a good God, a faithful God, a mighty God? What a mighty God we serve. Angels still bow before him in heaven and earth adore him. Somebody just look at somebody and say, he's a good God. Come on, find somebody that you didn't come with and say, God is still a good God. He's still saving. He's still healing. He's still healing sick bodies. Anybody believe it? He's good. 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 He's faithful. I don't know what he's done for you, but he's mighty. He's good. He's awesome. He's holy. He's righteous. Great and mighty is our God. Great and mighty is our God. Great and mighty is our God. And we shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. We give you the glory. We magnify your name. We thank you for being good. Hallelujah. Anybody know that he's still good? We're a little quiet for a good God. I said we're a little quiet for a good God. I don't know what he snatched you out of. I don't know what you've been through, what you're going through, or what you have to go through. I believe that God is going to change something in here tonight. Somebody just say, God, thank you for being good. Come on, if you don't know anything else to say, God, thank you for being good. You saved us. You've healed us. You've restored us. You've given us joy. You've given us peace. You've given us love even when we don't deserve it. And we say thank you. He's a good God and we appreciate him. Come on, everybody just worship with us. If you have two feet, just stand on your feet right here and worship with us. Lord, we thank you. We give you the glory. Hey. And you're going to sing with us because God is good. The song says, I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praise there shall continually be in my mouth. No matter what I see or how I feel. As long as I'm breathing, oh yes, I'm breathing. I'm going to bless the Lord. As long as I'm breathing, oh yes, I'm breathing, I bless the Lord. That's what we're going to do this evening. And if you know the song, I dare you to sing it with us. Come on, sing. I will bless. I will bless the Lord at all times. Come on, you got to say, and his praises. And his praises should continue to live your life. No matter what I see no or how I, I feel. feel. As long as I'm breathing, yeah, yeah. Oh, yes, I'll let as long as I have breath in my sight. Oh, oh, yes, I'll let it go. Oh, magnify. Oh, magnify the Lord with Yeah, me. that's what we come to do. Say, let us exalt, let us exalt his name his together. together. So let's lay down let's now, crown, yeah, yeah. And lift up his name. We come to do it. Let's do it together. Let's put your hands together right here. And we come to magnify the name of Jesus. There's none like him in all the earth. Come on, you got to say. I will bless the Lord. I will bless the Lord at all times. See, and his praise. And his praise that shall continue to be about. See, no matter what I see or how I feel. As long as I'm breathing, yeah. Oh, yes. As long as I have breath in my body, yeah, yeah. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt His name together. Come on, say, let's lay down our crown. Yeah. We come to do it. So let's do it together. Come on, I dare you to just move like this. Hey, let's do it together. Let's do it together. Yeah, yeah. I say, everybody said, let's do it. Let's do it together. He's been so good. He's been so kind. Let's do it. Let's do it together. Hey, now we're going to testify right here. Everybody say, because you've been better than good. You've been better than good to me. Has he been good to anybody? Say, because you've been better than good. You've been better than good to me. You woke me up this morning and said, You've been better than good. You've been better than good. Yeah, yeah. Because you've been better than good. You've been better than good. To Come me. on, that's all we're saying. You got insane. Because you've been better than good. You've been better than good to me. You've been so good, Jesus. Because you've been better than good. 
you've been better than good. You've been better than good to me. What has he done for you? Say, that you've been better than good. And we thank you, Jesus. Say, that you've been better than good. You've been better than good to me. Now we're gonna testify. I should have been dead. I should have been dead. Yes, Lord. But you've been better than good to me. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. I should have lost my mind. Just worship right here and say thank you, Jesus. I should have lost my mind. Lost my mind. Hey. Than good to me. Some things should have taken us out. We're gonna say that one more time. Say, I should have been dead. Thank you, Jesus. You've been better than good to me. Lord, we thank you for your keeping power with Jesus. I should have lost my mind. Jesus. Now come on now, you gonna testify right here. Everybody say, cause you've been better than good. You've been better than good to me. Thank you, Jesus. You've been better than good to me. You've been so good. You've been so good. You've been better than good to me. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we thank you. You've been better than good to me. You've been good. You've been better than good to me. So so good. You enough. You've been I can't praise you enough for all of the things you've, you've done, for the ways you made, you've for the times you've healed us. You keep making ways. You've been better than good. You've been better than good. Let it stop it to you. Did he make a way? Did he bring you out? Nobody like you.
thankful people. Open up your mouth and give them a praise. Open up your mouth and give them a praise. Open up your mouth and give them a praise. For he's good. And his mercy endures forever. The truth of the matter, we don't deserve it, but he keeps on doing great things. Oftentimes we come into God's house and we don't give him anything, but we ask for everything. But God, we come to give you everything tonight because we know that you are the I am that I am. You're the God that was yesterday, today, and forevermore. God, we thank you because we have everything we need. Even if you don't have what you think you want, God is still able. He is still capable to provide whatever you need. Great is his faithfulness. Yeah. Brand new mercies we see every day. And somebody just lift your hands all over the building and just worship, even in the virtual sanctuary. We don't know what people are going through on a daily basis. But what I do know that God is still able to heal you. He's still able to come through. He's still a strong tower. And the righteous can run in and they are safe. Lord, we thank you. Thank you, God. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Somebody lift up your worship all over the building. Oh, hey. God, we bless your name. Woo. They that worship in, they that worship, yeah. They that worship, worship in spirit and in truth. I don't know who God has been to you, but God has been everything. And if you know that God has been everything, I dare you to cry or worship in this place. Don't let anything mute your praise on a great God because he's worthy of the honor. He's worthy of the praise. We give you the glory. We give you the glory. We magnify you. We glorify you, Lord. The song says, I have everything I need. God, I have everything I need. I have everything I need. Why? Because the great I am provides. He keeps on providing for me. The great I am provides for me. If you believe it, lift your hands right here. Lord, we thank you. Come on, everybody. You got to say, I have everything. Let it ring through the sanctuary. See, I have everything, God. Even if it, I don't see it, the great I am he provides. The great I am he provides. Come on, we're going to say that one more time. Everybody say, I have everything. Trusted you, Jesus, and you come through. I, yeah. I didn't lean to my own understanding. Thank you, Lord. Because the great I am provides. You keep on doing it, Jesus. Everything. 
the I am you are. You're whoever I need you to be. You're the I am. Everybody say, whoever I need you say you're the I am you are. Get the glory. 
some way, somehow, when we're going through, oh, 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 yes, he will, he'll always get the glory. I want everybody in here to say, say, he'll always, he'll always get the glory. Everybody open up your mouth and say, he'll always get the glory. Come on, I dare you to sing to your situation. Sing to everything that's been trying to come against your family. Say, he'll always get the glory. Because when you give him glory, things change. Change breaks there. He'll always. You won't leave the same way that you came. So he'll always. So he'll always get the glory. 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 The song says, We make a miracle work, promise keep light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Oh, we make a miracle work, promise keep light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Come on, you gotta say, say, we make a miracle, promise keep. See, my God, yeah, that is who you are. If you need a way to be made, say, we make a miracle work. Promise keep light in the darkness. See, my God, that is who you are. Come on, if you know that's who he is, I dare you to put your hands on it. Right here and lift up a shout of praise all over this building for his goodness. Come on, for his goodness. God, we thank you. Lord, we thank you. Yeah. We thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Let's go to God in prayer. God, we thank you and we praise you indeed for who you are. We thank you and praise you for what you are up to. And for the fact that we're not here by accident. We're here because you planned it. So we thank you for those online. We thank you for those in the house. Speak to us now. May your word reveal to us what it is you would have us to know, be, and do. Heal us where we are broken. Strengthen us where we are weak. Speak to us. I'm available to be used as your instrument, and I have your way. In Jesus' name, amen. Would you thank God with me for our amazing young adult praise team? They have done that, set this place on fire, and so we praise God for them. Let me say a quick word of thanks to uh, all of our uh, wonderful young adults uh, who comprise the, uh, who are part of the family of faith of Friendship West. We thank God for you. Uh, we, with intentionality, uh, are investing as much energy as possible in uh, the cultivation, development of our ministry to and by and for young adults. And so uh, I praise God for you. I praise God for uh, Abani Jewel. She is giving leadership to our young adult ministry. And so I thank God for her. I thank God for her vision, her commitment, and her determination uh, that we never overlook, but instead do all we can to pour into, to invest uh, in our young adults. And so we thank God for uh, you, Albany. We thank God for our young adults. We thank God for all of you coming out. I know this is a little bit different. Uh, we are down here at the Black Academy of Arts and Letters. Shout out to Curtis King uh, here in the Muse Theater. And so we are excited to be here. And we thank God for what God is up to. I want to share with you uh, for a few moments uh, from a passage of scripture. We've been looking at uh, Luke chapter 1 uh, for 
uh, quite some time, and especially verse 48 this month, I want to give the context of that uh, in tonight's uh, study. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth. This is Luke chapter 1, beginning at verse 26. To a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what kind of greeting might this be. The angel said to her, Don't be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son. You will name him Jesus. He will be great, and he will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, how can this be, since I am a virgin? Another translation is, how can this be, since I don't know a man? The angel said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her who was said to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, here I am, servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. In those days, Mary set out and went with haste to a Judean town in the hill country where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leaped in her womb and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and exclaimed with a loud cry, blessed are you among women and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why has this happened to me that the mother of my Lord comes to me? For as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, the child in my womb leaped for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her by the Lord. Mary said, my soul magnifies the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. For God has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely from now on, all generations will call me blessed. I'm going to talk in these few moments about looking good in a broken mirror. Looking good in a broken mirror. Looking good in a broken mirror. Please understand how you view you will either cause you to get in your own way or propel you onward on the path toward purpose as you are empowered to live on purpose. And so the question I have to ask if what I have just shared is true, and that is, how do you see you? When you look at your internal mirror, because that's what I'm dealing with tonight, this whole concept of self image and self image has everything to do with how we see ourselves from the inside out self image has everything to do with what we see when we look in the mirror beyond what we see you didn't get it I'll see if I can make it plain Beyonce the queen bee herself testified that her mother taught her the value, the importance, not only of how she was seen, but also how she sees herself. I hope y'all get that right there. This is the queen bee talking. She testifies with honesty that my mother taught me the importance, number one, of how I am seen. Beyonce's mom tried to pour into her the importance, watch this, of presentation. In this life presentation, how you show up in this life, how you show up on your job, how you show up in relationships, presentation, how you are seen is valuable. It's important. I'm not done. It's not just how I'm seen, but also Beyonce's mother said how you see yourself. Watch this because Beyonce's mother in essence was saying that 
presentation without internal affirmation leads ends up with an empty life. I'll say it better because that didn't come out good even though it is good. Presentation externally without internal affirmation will cause you to lead an empty life. I'm still not coming through. I'll make it real plain. Since this is a Bible study night, don't forget that passage in what was it? Numbers chapter 13. The Bible lets us know the people of God had been emancipated by God from Egyptian enslavement. They are now, watch this, on the warm threshold of walking into promise and possibility. And the Bible says Moses, the legendary lawgiver and liberator, sends a crew, a reconnaissance team of 12 spies to go and check out the land. As they are checking out the land, two basically, Caleb and Joshua said, we got this thing, but 10 come back with the majority report, and you know what they said. The 10 said, we saw indeed a land flowing with milk and honey, just like God promised, but God left something out. God did not tell us that there were giants in the land, and when we beheld the giants, we became as grasshoppers in our sight and in their sight also. Y'all didn't get that. I'll go back and grab you. They said we saw the promised land possibilities of milk and honey, but we also saw challenges in the land, giants, and when we saw them, we became as grasshoppers in our sight and in their sight also. So what I had to do, of course, was give them an interview because I couldn't understand how they came up with the concept that they were grasshoppers, but not just that. They literally said that the giants in the land saw them as grasshoppers. I said, did y'all survey the giants in the land and the giants tell you that you look like grasshoppers to them? Of course not. What they were guilty of was projecting onto the others what they felt about themselves. You recognize that projection. Don't miss your shout here. Projection is from the realm of psychology. In psychology, they have a term projection that comes from what? Projector. Now, y'all are young adults. Y'all don't know nothing about projectors, but when I was coming up, we did not have videos we watched, but we had watched this, a projector in school, and the projector would project onto the screen what was going on inside of it. And so whatever was going on inside of the projector was projected onto something that was external. Y'all still not getting this thing. Whatever was going on, if there was horror inside the projector, the horror was projected onto the screen. If there was drama in the projector, the drama was projected onto the screen. And what we do if we're not careful, we project onto others what's going on inside of us and that's what's happening in Numbers chapter 13. There is a projection of what's going on inside of them. What lessons do we learn? I'll give you a few lessons and then hop into our text. Lesson number one is don't miss the fact that they were promised by God the promised land but because of how they saw themselves they canceled God's promise in their life. Y'all didn't get that, but that's fire right there. God had promised their fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, their mother, Sarah, Rebecca, Rachel, etc., that they would inhabit the land of promise. And now God, after setting them free, sends them on their way through the wilderness. They're, there, they're right there at the promised land, but the Bible says they don't get to go into the promised land. Why? Because they they canceled God's promise because of how they saw themselves. Do you not know you can cancel God's promise on your life because of the negative grasshopper way that you see yourself? But not only that, and that was good enough right there, but also you will undermine your own relationships with others by how you see yourself. I just read Jamel Hill's book, amazing book, Uphill. Listen to what she says about her grandmother 
Jamel Hill says, my grandmother kept marrying men who chose to crush her spirit. And then she raises the question, I don't know what she was missing. I don't know what void was in her life that caused her to conclude that when she saw herself, she was not enough. Stop right there. She kept hooking up with people who chose to crush her spirit. Jamel Hill interprets because of how she saw herself and how she saw herself was what? Not enough. I need to ask a question right now. How do you see yourself? I need to follow up with the question. Are you enough? Do you see yourself as enough? If you don't see yourself as enough, you will undermine relationships. You will sabotage relationships and attract to your life those persons who will reinforce what you already feel about yourself, and that is you are not enough. Wow, that's powerful. And so I thought I would connect that with what's happening in this passage. The Bible lets us know that Mary is approached by an angel, Gabriel. Gabriel says to Mary, do you see the beautiful greeting? Mary, you are blessed and highly favored. Mary, you are an amazing woman who has been chosen by God. And Mary, the Bible says, is perplexed. That's a real nice translation. It's not the best translation. The better translation says that she was agitated. She was what? Shook by the greeting that came from this angel. Perhaps you want to know why. It had everything to do that, first of all, Mary is a second class citizen in Nazareth because don't forget the angel comes to Nazareth. Y'all already know that Nazareth didn't have a good reputation when it was found that the Messiah was coming from Nazareth. Somebody said, can any good thing come out of Nazareth? If NWA is rapping back in the day of Jesus and Mary, their album is called Straight Out of Nazareth. Nazareth is the wrong side of town. Nazareth is the wrong side of the tracks. Mary is in Nazareth. I'm not done. Not only is she in Nazareth, but the Bible says she is probably, according to the womanist biblical scholar, Mitzi Smith, a slave. Why? Because Rome was known for its slaveocracy, its slave culture. And so when we spiritualize it and we hear Mary talk about being a slave of the Lord, Mitzi Smith says, no, that's not the context. We spiritualize it and you miss out on the fact that she is probably a second class citizen a slave who is merchandise a slave who was treated at the bottom of the hierarchy of value and now she has someone come to her and say to her you are blessed and highly favored that leaves her shook it's good but guess what it leaves her shook because that ain't what she's used to hearing she's not used to hearing she's blessed and highly favored so when you hear something good about you when your life, watch this, is surrounded by bad, the question becomes, how do you see yourself in a good light when you spend so much time in the badness of darkness? Y'all still missing my shout that I'm trying to give y'all. Mary finds herself now receiving this news, and when she receives this news, we see God literally through God's word, the messenger. We see God, watch this this forming, reforming, and transforming the way Mary saw herself. I love it right there. God literally forms, reinforms, reforms, and transforms how Mary saw herself. And so my question one more again is, how do you see you? How do you see you? Self-image reflects the reality that all of us every day are evaluating messages that have been sent to us in the past and the present about how we look, about how we perform, about how we relate, okay? How we look. And so if you're not careful in this, what, social media culture, you'll spend a lot of positive energy evaluating yourself in a negative light because you compare your behind the scenes to someone else's filter. 
Oh, yeah, they show up glam for the gram and look hot on TikTok, and you compare their filter to what you know about yourself behind the scenes, and you automatically lose because that is one of the dangers of social media assaulting your mental health. Y'all didn't get that. I got to keep this thing moving because not only that, I thought we would unpack this because Mary is saying to all of us, it is so important that you have a health the view of yourself, a healthy self-image, and I want to walk through it to see if we can rebuild it and let you know, here's your shout, you can look good even when the mirror is broken. Now, I love my subject, but it ain't original with me. There's a song by Lil Wayne that came out probably a decade ago called Mirror, Mirror. And Lil Wayne in Mirror Mirror has this line that made me shout. Don't judge me. Lil Wayne said, I look good even in a broken mirror. And that's what I want to deal with because I understand that if self-image has to do with our internal mirror, our internal mirror often is a reflection of a mirror that has been projected onto us by those around us. We as people of Ebony Hue already recognize that because we live in a nation that for so long made black a stigma and African something that was negative. We live in a nation that basically said that if you were black, you had to get back. If you were brown, don't stick around. Only if you were white were you all right. That's the nation we find ourselves living in. But it's not just that. In your own context, you find yourself being what? Fed information about how you look, how you perform, how you relate. By your parents, by your friends, by teachers, by loved ones, and yes, even by haters. But watch God say, even when the mirror has been broken, you can still look good. How you look good in a broken mirror? I'm almost done. You look good in a broken mirror. This text says, when you discover the truth, and this is a powerful truth right here, please don't miss it and don't shout because I got two more to give you. But the first thing I'm trying to give you is that Mary lets us know, or God through the angel lets us know, that you can rebuild your self-image by taking on the divine image, okay? You can rebuild the image within you by accepting the divine image of you. <sighs> okay, okay. Uh, the Bible says, I think it's Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, that when God made human beings, God made them in God's image and in God's likeness. You were made in the image of God. The imago dei, the image of God is stamped on you. No matter what others have said about you, regardless of how they see you, there is an image of God stamped on you. Our African ancestors, especially the Yoruba and the Ashanti, they got this really well because the Yoruba, the Yoruba and the Ashanti declared that you ought to revere children when they were born. So when babies were born, they protected the babies. They protected the children. Why? Because in the mindset of the Yoruba and the Ashanti children having just come from heaven had been packaged, watch this, with personhood and purpose by Almighty God. And so what the adults wanted to do was to ensure that when the children arrived that they were what nurtured and cultivated according to the personhood and purpose that God had given them in heaven before releasing them on earth. Please hear me well. A divine image, God's image has been stamped on you. you. You are made in God's image and in God's likeness and you understand the power of image. Naeem Akbar, brilliant black psychologist, said that we live in a world where image informs identity. So in the animal kingdom, they know who they are, not by image, but by instinct. Elephant acts like an elephant by instinct. 
human beings, we know who we are by images that are fed to us. I want to know what images have been fed to you about you. Because the images around you may get in you and then infect you. And as a consequence, the image of God stamped on you is almost erased or canceled because of the images around you. And so that's why tonight I wanted to remind you, you have the Imago Dei stamped on you. You are made in the image and likeness of God. And so Howard Thurman is right. God literally puts a crown not on our head but above our head and every day you ought to spend your time trying to grow tall enough to wear it because God addresses us I got to show you some education right now that I have in the subjunctive okay okay you forgot your grammar in the subjunctive mood the subjunctive mood is basically that which speaks of what's possible and so God places on, no, above your head, this crown of God's image and wants you to grow tall enough to wear it. Huh. And so look at the images in the passage. Here comes the angel Gabriel and says, Mary, blessed and highly favored. Here comes Mary going to Elizabeth's house. And Elizabeth says, oh, my God. It's Mary, the mother of my Lord, and calls her what? Blessed. Images are being poured into Mary that in a real sense are reconstructing her own self-image. And that's the word I'm trying to give all of you. God's image is stamped on you. You are made in the image and likeness of Almighty God. But here's another thing, and it's really good, and that is the right people around you will give you the right view of you. Here's what happens in the passage. Mary lets us know, if you're going to have your self-image rebuilt, make sure you have some angels that pour into you and some Elizabeths that ain't jealous of you. Wow. Some angels that pour into you. Because angels will see in you what you don't see in yourself. Angels will see what's going on, what God is doing in your life that you may not pick up on yourself. Angels will do that. And so check out the angels that God marshals into your life and make up your mind to listen to the angels. Wait, it's not just the angels, it's your Elizabeths. I love Elizabeth. Because Elizabeth, the book says, she's older than Mary. Mary is young. Elizabeth has been hoping for this all of her life. And finally she gets pregnant. And then here comes her young cousin. And her young cousin is pregnant with the Messiah. The Messiah, watch this. And as a consequence, Elizabeth's child is going to be the forerunner of the Messiah. Yet Elizabeth ain't jelly of what Mary has going on inside of her. And that's what I want to ask you. I think it's... Linda Clemens Deb, who says, quit giving negative people the opportunity to live rent free in your mind. Because if you're not careful, it's the jealous folk around you. Everybody around you ain't loving on you. Everybody around you is not celebrating you when everything are going well. And so it's only as you evaluate the persons in your circle because you've got to make sure that you don't have people in your circle, please don't miss this, who are jealous of what God is doing. Here's what I'm trying to say. When you have people in your circle who have Elizabeth personalities, Elizabeth celebrates what's going on with you. Elizabeth shouts when you walk in the door. Elizabeth sees what's up in you and does not believe that what's going on in you takes away from what's going on in her because Elizabeth ain't jealous of what God is doing in your life. Okay, let me quit with this. I guess my last piece is after the right people around you give you the right view of you, after your own self-image is rebuilt by the divine image of you, the final piece this text says is that God lets you know when you know who you are, you can now live in the power of why you are. 
Here's something, Pastor White, I never hear. And that is the etymology of Mary's name. You know what her name means in the original language? Rebellious one. It means M Mary. Rebellious one. It ain't preached. Mary, rebellious one. Watch what happens after she says what I just shared in verse 48. She goes on to announce what God is about to do. And it's literally a revolution, a rebellion that's about to take place. Y'all think I made this up? I'm going to read it, and I promise you I'll be coming to a close. Look what she says. My soul magnifies the Lord. She's getting her praise on. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior, for God has looked with favor on the lowliness of God's slave. Surely from now on, generations will call me blessed. She sees herself differently now. But here's the rebellion for the mighty one has done great things for me. Holy is God's name. God's mercy is for those who fear God from generation to generation. God has shown strength with his arm. God has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. God has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly, has filled the hungry with good things. Do y'all see the rebellion going on? The revolution that's taking place? It's taking place because Mary now knows who she is and she's operating in why she is that is what I'm trying to say to y'all know who you are because when you know who you are because God's image is stamped on you you live in the power of why you are I quit with this I quit with this Larry Daniel Favors tells this story that messed me up she said one time there was a race that everyone was excited about between a cheetah and a greyhound. Man, I wanted to see that race. A cheetah and a greyhound. And they had the cheetah and greyhound in the cage that they would raise up and they would race around the track. All of a sudden, the cages were raised. The greyhound took off and the cheetah didn't move. People are tripping. Why did the cheetah not move, but the greyhound did. The greyhound, they concluded, won. And someone asked an expert who studies cheetahs, why did the cheetah not run? The expert said the cheetah didn't run because the cheetah does not feel the necessity of comparing its speed to the speed of anyone else. The cheetah uses its speed for one purpose, to hunt. The cheetah says, I'm not going to use what God gave me to prove to y'all whether or not I'm fast. That's already been established when God made me. So I don't have to compare myself to a greyhound. I don't have to compare myself to someone else because I already know who I am. And so because I know who I am, I'm going to use who I am for my purpose, and my purpose is to hunt. And since I'm not hunting right now, why am I going to race when there's nothing worth hunting for. God told me to tell somebody, some cheetah who is here tonight, some cheetah who is watching online, quit comparing yourself to somebody else. God made you, you. And since God made you, you, you ain't got to worry about competing with someone else. The only person I'm competing with is who I was yesterday. And if I'm better today than I was yesterday, I win. I, I ain't trying to compare and compete with somebody else I'm trying to be the best version of what God made me and when I'm that I can look good even in a broken mirror Beyonce I got a quarter one time and I'm done you know what Beyonce said this is good you're gonna love this uh, Beyonce says dancing in the mirror kiss my scars because I love what they made me Wow, wow. I look in the mirror, yeah, I'm scarred, but I can kiss them because even the scars help to make me the me that I am. Look good, 
even in a broken mirror. Hello, hello, hello. Thank you so much, Dad. That was amazing. <laughs> So really quick, just had a few quick questions. I don't know if anybody in the audience has any questions, but um, I wanted to ask you, based upon uh, what you gave us this evening, what are one or two practical tools that, you, that we can take to improve our own self-image? Yeah, I appreciate that. I think, uh, you know, practically speaking, how I see myself has always improved as I work to improve myself by reading. Uh, and then the second piece, reading and, and whatever I'm doing to, to, to make sure I'm growing. I think that's the important thing. The second piece is, and it's just so important, that you surround yourself with the right people uh, who, who are jealous of you, who believe in you. Uh, I'll just be real open right now. One of my reflections recently has been on the fact that uh, when I first came to the church, and I'm 22 years old pastoring, and I got a whole lot of self-doubt that I can do this. And there was uh, one particular person who reinforced my self-doubt. Uh, she did not want me to be pastor of the church and was real clear about that. And one time after church, she said, you need to let me know what to call you. Uh, what do I call you? And so I just heard someone say, one of the greatest honors you can have is to have someone call you pastor. And so I told her that. I said, I'd be honored to, for you to call me pastor. Huh, I ain't going to never call you pastor. You younger than my kid. You just a boy to me. And I spent a few years not seeing myself as a pastor because of the poisonous stuff she said to me. Here's what Began, began the transformation. And that is, I also had in my life Emmanuel Scott. And Emmanuel Scott was always telling me how gifted, man, you're so gifted. E.K. Bailey would say, with your gifts, this, 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 this. So I got Emmanuel Scott, E.K. Bailey. And so one time I shared with Bailey what this person in the church had said to me. And E.K. said this to me, said, so Dr. Scott keeps telling you how gifted you are. You got members of that church who come hear you every Sunday. I'm telling you how gifted you are. So you got a choice to make right now. Are you going to listen to someone you know hates you? Or are you going to listen to those of us who believe in you? You got to make up your mind who you're going to listen to. Because if you're not careful, you can spend a whole lot of positive energy on the negative people who you know can't stand you. That will, that will hijack your self-image. So then I have a good follow-up to that um, because I think in our relationships and friendships, we go through different things. I think any relationship and friendship has its ups and downs. So then how do we measure the health or toxicity of relationships with those around us? Oh, that is a good question. Uh, she said, I have a good follow-up question. <laughs> you, that's a good follow-up question. So, so I think it's very important. For me, again, I keep going back to Elizabeth. Elizabeth, and because, because and, and let me use the Malcolm X, Elijah Muhammad illustration of the water that, you know, was clear versus the water that was cloudy, uh, to be nice about it. And you have to be discerning and know who the clear water people are versus those with stuff in their water. Uh, because I've discovered this, that I evaluate certain relationships by, okay, can you celebrate me when I'm doing well? Uh, just as I celebrate you when you're doing well. Uh, is this a relationship where you're always taking from me, but you never pour into me? Uh, is this a relationship where I hear things you're saying about me behind my back, but you're always smiling in my face, almost as if you're overcompensating for what you're saying behind my back? 
And so when I, again, just being transparent in my own situations, I have some people I've had to put. And this is, Linda Clemens gave me this, uh, and, and I just think it's brilliant. You almost have to treat people like you do, uh, like airlines do passengers. Uh, some people in your life are in first class. Well, you pay a little extra to be in first class. Some folk are in the main cabin. Now, they're still riding with you, but you know they have not paid the price to be up in first class with you. You got other folk who are on standby. And if they're on standby, that means, you know, they're either late or, or you, you're just not quite sure. And so basically, I think it's important for us to, and, and don't judge this, just, just, just kind of check it out. And that is have some categories. Everybody, I don't call everybody my friend. There are some people who are associates. There are some folk I just know, but I don't call them friends. And, and there are some folk, watch this, it's like our values align. And so because our values align, that's going to be a healthy relationship. Uh, there are others, our values don't align, but we have a good time together. Uh, I got to put you over here, though, because I know your values will take you someplace I may not want to go. But I don't mind having you around just right in the main cabin. You're not going to be in coach. Sometimes I'll put you on standby uh, because I don't know how you're going to handle your liquor. Uh, and uh, Am I in the wrong, wrong place? Uh, uh, and, and, and yeah, yeah. Um, okay. I have one more question. Does anyone from the audience have anything that they would like to ask as it pertains to the message? No? Okay. Oh, yeah, therapy. Yeah, so um, just for the online audience, there was a question asked about therapy. Right, right. Thank you for that. Uh, great alpha, man. I, I know I was so chilly in here tonight. But, uh, but on... on, on <laughs> That was for Saul. But on, on a serious tip, uh, I, I, I can't overemphasize how God and God's goodness gives gifts for our healing, liberation, deliverance, and wholeness. One gift that God gives is the gift of those who are therapists, psychologists, uh, psychiatrists, uh, who help us and equip us with the tools necessary to rebuild broken self-images, to be healed from, delivered from. And so there is no, what, dichotomy between prayer and therapy, okay? You can pray, 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 pray. And then God says, okay, I'm going to give the answer to your therapist. And it's really okay. It's really okay to sit down and talk with someone who guides you in the conversation towards healing and wholeness. Well, okay, really quick, because I know, and I don't want to overdo time, but I know I have friends personally, and there's a generation that comes before us who doesn't believe in therapy, and, and a lot of times they will shun their children for even going to therapy. So how do we even work through that? Right, so, so here's the thing. With all due respect, and, and you always respect the elders. I, I, you got to give them respect. Elders came from a space where that was looked down upon, mainly because we did not have those kind of opportunities. I mean, so we got to be real about that, honest about that. Uh, my mother did not have that kind of access to therapy that my generation has or your generation has. So I'm not going to judge them. When they look down on me, I don't look down on you back because I'm going to get therapy so I can get better. And if I'm getting better, then a part of my betterness allows me to deal with you in a way that is healthy, even if you're dealing with me in a way that is unhealthy. But your lack of health is not going to compromise my health. Okay? Does that make sense? That makes perfect sense. I, I like therapy. <laughs> um, one more. 
just a sec. We have our mics for it. Um, when it comes to black men in America, how do we work on our image when the world paints the image for us that we are negative instead of positive? Man, I love that question. And I thank you for that. Uh, because first, we got to recognize that that is exactly what's going on. Uh, when you think black men in this country, a narrative has literally been established about black men so that I think it's uh, uh, Khalil Gibran Muhammad who's written about the condemnation of blackness. And a part of that has to do with the criminalizing of the black man. And so you criminalize those you are afraid of. And then you not only criminalize them, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to come to you, I'm, I'm, I'm going around to answer your question because what you said is so profound. Not only do you criminalize them, but you, but you then weaponize their bodies. So whenever there is a police shooting of an unarmed black man, what is, what, what's the response, what's the narrative going to be? I feared for my life. I feared for my life. Now, now you got the gun, you have the weaponry, but you fear for your life when you see an unarmed black man, Walter Scott, running from you, but you fear for your life. You fear you. You see Mike Brown as this big, uh, overgrown wrestler, you know, and he wanted to use some animal uh, uh, metaphors for Mike Brown. So what you're saying is so profound. In light of that, what do we do? A, stop looking to them for a validation, and B, stop looking to them for how we should see ourselves. And I'm going to say this, and don't judge me. Pray for me, okay? And that is, we've got to quit as black people determining that our proximity to whiteness is the source of success and greatness. We've got to come to grips with the fact that who God made us is enough. As a matter of fact, we're the original people. Everybody came from us. And so, 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 oh, I, I, I'm, I'm going to do this right quick, and I promise you I'm going to wrap it. And that is what's happening in Texas and Florida, book banning, whitewashing of history. There's a reason behind that. They don't want you to know about the greatness of Africa. They don't want you to know that they, they want us ignorant about Africa. I've made up my mind. I'm, I'm not going to present hardly anything going forward without some reference to the greatness of our heritage on the mother continent. Because a part of what has done us in is this whole thing where Africa is seen as negative. And I forgot who said it. I think it's, uh, uh, oh, my God, I can't, I can't think of my sister's name right now. But she made the statement. There is no future for those who despise their source. So, so, so if we hate where we came from, if we're scared of where we came from, if we negativize where we came from, we don't have a future. And so a part of this, again, long answer to your brilliant short question, is stop deciding that success and whiteness are synonymous and then let's study for ourselves, our history, who we are, because the Egyptian dictum, know thyself, remains a source of power. As long as you know who you are, you ain't got to live down to what others say about you. And so now that means we create our own images. I love the fact. And I say this, and don't forget to be here this weekend, but this is the Black Academy of Arts and Letters where we are holding our first one. The Black Academy of Arts and Letters. Y'all missed your shout. We have shown up in a space for us that gives a stage to us. The only thing is, us don't often celebrate and appreciate our usness. And as a consequence, 
here you got this amazing stage, this wonderful platform, the Black Academy of Arts and Letters that's always affirming us in our blackness and Africanity. We got to take advantage of that. One of the things, and I, I quit with this, okay? I promise you, I, I, I get going and I, and I get going. Yep. Uh, <laughs> you did not have to agree with that. Um, we're going to probably lose affirmative action with the Supreme Court. It may be a good thing. Now, now it's, it's a lot bad about it. I'm not going to deny that. But what if it makes us go back to us? What if it makes us go to HBCUs? Imagine March Madness and Kansas and all them schools just have their little white players playing. And then here we come with Howard and, and Hampton and Texas Southern and Paul Quinn. Y'all, we'd spank them. We'd spank them. So, so it may be that ending affirmative action sends us home. And when we get home, we see images of us that are positive and affirming. So I hope that got some of what you were saying, but, but we got to come home, y'all, and make sure that there are images of us, about us. When you go to Friendship West and come in that area where the pastoral suite is and you see all those paintings by uh, Michael Hawkins, do you know how many compliments we get on that? And then what Cornell did during the uh, COVID break, and you come in and you see images of Martin King, images of of Robert Castle who organized Friendship West. You see, you're, you're seeing images of black excellence all around you because images inform identity. Check your images so your images won't wreck you. Thank you. Well, real quick, before, the, uh, before we uh, invite people, if you would like to join our church, I would like to plug, once again, the Black Academy of Arts and Letters. There's lots of programming. I have some flyers and uh, of the season programs to pass out to y'all. So please, you can also get a membership here. And we would love if we could continue to support this institution because they really, really support us. Amen. Speaking of this coming weekend, right, Friday, at 7, and Saturday the matinee is at 2 o'clock. So make sure you get your tickets. It's going to be a powerful piece on the crucifixion of Jesus Christ as we move toward the resurrection. So please make sure that you are here, uh, and let's support us, okay? Let's support us. They don't want us, but they love our culture. They just can't stand us. So why don't we love us and our culture, all right? Uh, listen, you've tuned in or you're in the house. And you know that your image, God has stamped God's image on you. Don't you want to connect with the God who made you? As a matter of fact, I've discovered this, and that is you will never know what you were made for unless you connect with your maker. And so tonight's a good night to discover what you are made for. And so if you're online, dial the number that I pray is on the screen. That I cannot remember right Four, now. Four six nine four nine eight zero two one zero. And you. if you're in the building, you can email join us at friendshipwest.org. You're just showing me up, huh? No. <laughs> All right. So yeah, that's the number, and you can also email us if you're in the house and you'd like to give your life to Christ tonight. It's a mighty good night to do that. If you're in the house, you'd love to join our church. We'd love to have you. I'd love to serve as your pastor. Please, tonight is a mighty good night. It'd be crazy to go back on Sunday and celebrate the fact that at the Black Academy of Arts and Letters Young Adult Night, we basically had folk connect with Jesus as they said, I want to join Friendship West. And so if you're here, you'd like to join church, you're here, and you want to give your life to Christ, it's a mighty good night to do that. You can come forward, and we will share with you how you can give your life to Christ and join church. Or as Ivany said, dial the numbers, and email us, and you can do that right now. Mike, I think you're playing that good song. There's nothing better than knowing Jesus. He will turn your life around. You ought to know him. Get to know him. When should you do it? Right now. Won't you come right now? If you're in the house, come on right now. 
If you're online, handle your business. We'd love to have you. bless you. It's offering time. It's offering time. Even at the Black Academy of Arts and Letters where two or three gather together in Friendship West name, there will be an offering. That's gospel according to Freddie. Uh, chapter 3 verse 10. And so uh, you can give uh, via uh, text to give 972-200-9419 You text FWBC to that number and the amount and we will receive gladly your gift. Also, you can give uh, online through the website, friendshipwest.org, or the FWBC app, or you can give through the Givelify app, search out Friendship West, and give through that same vehicle, or there's a QR code. You can scan that and give through that vehicle, or you can even mail your offering in I think the address is 2020 West Wheatland Road, Dallas, Texas, 75232. Please do that. Let's pray for the offering. God, thank you for the privilege of giving. Receive these gifts as expressions of our love and thanksgiving. And then use these gifts so that through them, lives will be changed, souls will be liberating good news. The captives will be set free. The blind will receive their sight. The downhearted will be uplifted. And those who are economically oppressed will experience your year of jubilee. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you all for coming out. Thank you all for tuning in online. Um, there was a sign-in sheet if you're a young adult and interested in being more involved with our young adult ministry at Friendship West. Please fill that out. Like I said, um, you can see me for the uh, T-Ball information. And then also join us on Sunday, April 9th for Easter Sunday worship at 8 a.m. and 10 a.m. You did good, Pastor. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you, Pastor. God bless. Is that Curtis King back there? Yes. Long live the King, Curtis King. Good to see you, man. Thank you for coming. I didn't know you are here. God bless you. OMG. That was fire. And we're fired uh. up that you were here for it. You know what would be hot? You're checking out at Friendship West so that you can like, share, or subscribe us on social media. It helps more than you'll know. And also, please go to www.friendshipwest.org and find out even more about this powerful Christian movement. You'll feel all warm inside to see how your prayers, your offerings or monetary gifts and your investment of volunteer time can help make a difference with this difference making ministry. For all who were here as visitors, you can share you were here by taking time to text FWBIZ to the number 28950. If you're fired up about joining our family of faith, don't fight the spirit. Instead, Call now, 469-498-0210, or email join us at friendshipwest.org with your first name, your last name, and your cell number. Either way, it will be lit to hear from you. Friendship West Baptist Church. Come experience.